my dear amma i returned from badri after a 51 day bhajan and reached the ashrama yesterday let me repeatedly assert that i could return without any mishap or illness on the way thanks to the blessings of all of you i shall send the prasadam soon hope you are all continuing with the panchakshari japa without break om namah shivaya the birthday of my guru shri swami shivananda saraswati falls on this september 8th i hope to receive ashrama siddhi on that day after that i have a wish to go to the banks of the yamuna in agra and do solitary japa for a month he then describes his desire for a padayatra to various holy shrines across 3000 miles over 3 years he writes it is my belief that after this the corruptive elements like attachment competitiveness egotism boasting etc that are dominated by the rajoguna will no more be present in me it is these corruptive elements of the rajoguna that are worrying me right now all is possible with parama shiva's grace prostrating in respect and love i seek your blessings your own balan perhaps this is a source of comfort for us to know that those corruptive elements those human frailties can exist even in one who is at the doorstep of sainthood as we've all seen thus far the char dham yatra especially the 40 days of tapas at badri was the tipping point in balan's decision to take up sanyasa when he arrived at ananda kutir in late august swami shivananda seemed to know this as well he insisted that balan obtain permission from his father for you see a hindu son is responsible for the welfare of his parents this responsibility cannot be foregone unless there is another son in the house capable of taking on this duty or if the parents are self sufficient both were true in the case of balan nevertheless swami shivananda said permission had to be obtained it had been over 10 years since balan communicated with his father their relationship was strained and now the son had a lot of explaining to do and he did balan wrote a 8 page letter with the relevant events of these 10 years his college life his political involvement imprisonment his works as a journalist and then he described his inner feelings and how they have changed his detest for a life that is lived only to eat sleep and breed as he put it he wrote about his visit to rishikesh and the influence that swami shivananda had on him and finally his desire to become a sanyasi the elder menon was naturally shocked he couldn't believe it remember this was his son who had openly criticized religion who had for the most part failed in his education whose only concern seemed to be the acquisition of the finest things that money could buy how could he even consider becoming a sanyasi also just like every hindu father he wished for his son to live the life of a grihastha a householder have a great career and a family other family members were taken aback too but not kochu amma balan's mother she instantly made it clear that she approved of his decision happily the prophetic words of chatambi swamigal now began to ring true in the end balan's father revealed his decision to the family saying this boy always does exactly what he wants it is useless for me to try and stand in his way he sent off his letter of permission to balan and swami shivananda the letter was just 5 lines i wonder 
whether you can live the life of a sannyasi. You must have met a great saint to have been influenced so greatly. If this Swamiji makes you a sannyasi and you succeed in that calling, no one will be happier than myself. And he ended the letter with his blessings. Balan then broached the topic with Swami Tapovan Maharaj, who wrote back quickly, and that letter reads, Received your letter. Getting ready for the acceptance of sannyasa is new information. The immediate thought was, what is the objection now in continuing in this form itself for some period, associating with saints, and if it felt good, then the change of dress can come after some time. What more is there to write about? This much has been written only because from the day of meeting you, some special affection found place in the mind. He ends the letter with some poignant advice that we could all benefit from. In all conditions, however difficult and tiresome, keep the mind joyous without getting into worries. With proper thinking, perform whatever is to be done without excitement. Wishing you all types of victories, Swami Tapovanam. Looking back, it is fascinating that just a year ago, Balan had come to Rishikesh as a journalist to expose the bluff of the Swamis. A rapid succession of transformations took place in him. He has tasted by now the bliss of enlightenment. He knows that there is no choice now but to go all the way for that ultimate touchdown. Sannyasa is the next logical step.